shut up! Hello, I am Ian E. Cox. I am from the YouTube channel called Smosh, an ensemble of funny people. We've been making funny videos on the internet for 16 and almost 17 years. When, when strangers ask me what I do, it's still very hard to answer because, oh, I make, I make YouTube videos. Cause that's like, that's the easiest for people to like wrap their heads around. But then usually they're like, oh, what kind of videos? And I'm like, well, comedy, like sketch. And they're like, oh, so like Saturday Night Live. And it's like, ah, I mean, yeah, sure. So it's been interesting to kind of see the shift of what people know Smosh for. Because in the beginning, it was it was obviously myself and, and my friend Anthony. We we're just making sketches together. And a lot of people grew up watching those, but now people are watching all sorts of different stuff that we make now and, and have no idea maybe that we are still doing sketch. It's like, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> this is one of the things we do. <laughs> Friend Anthony started the website in 2002 as like a, a place for people in our school to like get together online. Um, we had a forum, which I mean, I guess for the younger folks, you could describe it like a discord. When we graduated high school, we were making some silly like lip sync videos on, on a webcam. And we were like, what should we call ourselves? And you know, he already had the Smosh website and we didn't want to just call like our channel Ian and Anthony Productions. We're like, well, I don't know. Let's just call ourselves Smosh. Like we already have Smosh.com in like, you know, 2003, 2004, you know, one of the, one of our favorite websites was Newgrounds, which was like an animation website. Anthony created something very similar to that. So people were uploading animations to his website. So it was getting some traction outside of our school. We also had our MySpace uh, page, which kind of grew a little audience in it. So when YouTube came around uh, and we started uploading there, we were kind of able to push like our MySpace audience to go watch it on YouTube. And I think because of that, you know, we were able to get some views and, and kind of, you know, edge ourselves up above some of the other content that was on there. We were bored and we were just kind of messing around and, and he had this like crappy webcam that he borrowed from his dad. And that was kind of just the thing that people did back then, like lip sync videos were, were just a thing. And, you know, we kind of, we did the lip syncs, but we kind of also were putting a different kind of spin onto it. We had like, some like sketch elements to it, you know, pointing out like with our Pokemon theme song, you know, we were showing us like, you know, beating the shit out of like a Pikachu before we had to like be able to capture it. So it was like, we were adding in these kind of jokes into it rather than just doing a strict like lip sync. But yeah, it is kind of funny to talk about lip sync content. A couple of years ago, TikTok comes around and what is everyone doing? Lip syncs. So it's kind of funny to see like, this kind of like cyclical nature of content. <laughs> I think that was our first video to go on the YouTube front page, which at that time, that was really the only way to get discovered. It was either you get on the YouTube front page or you get on like the most viewed list. Cause that was the only way to like think that maybe the video's quality, like, okay, got a lot of views. I guess it's good. The Pokemon theme music video is definitely the one that blew up. And then it wound up being the, the most viewed video of all time on YouTube for I think like a year and a half. But it's just so funny to think like at the at the time that it was removed, it had 24 million views, which is a lot of views. But, you know, nowadays there's there's some YouTubers that get that within, you know, within a day even. I think also like the notion of viral doesn't really exist that much anymore because we just watch what the algorithm tells us to watch. How many of us are watching things because, you know, it got shared between friends and people are like, you have to watch this video. You know, they watch that video and they're coming back to watch the next one that we put out. So that was very interesting to see. Like it, it felt very different from all the other viral videos that we had seen where, you know, you have somebody like Numa Numa or the Star Wars kid 
I don't know, like all these things that were like one video and then they disappeared forever. We were seeing something different where, you know, we had something like the Pokemon theme music video and then we put out another video and it also got a lot of views. We were like, oh, okay. Like this isn't just like a 15 minutes kind of thing. Like there's an audience that actually wants to see more from us. Um, and we're, and you know, maybe we won't be known as like the Pokemon guys. Well, I can tell you exactly why that became so big. And, and this was a, I'm being very honest. It was a mistake. It was a, it was an accident. So at that time on YouTube, there was no way to choose your thumbnail. So it would just, they would just take what was ever in, in the middle of the video at the, at the 50% mark. Whatever was that frame would be your thumbnail. At that time, uh, there were several YouTubers that would like flash something in the middle of the video in order to get that thumbnail. We never did that. However, in that video, we there was that famous, at that time, there was that famous Britney Spears uh, coochie shot. And uh, we reference it in that video and we show a censored shot of that picture. This is purely by accident. That was the frame in the middle of the video. So for, you know, the first, you know, eight years that that video was, was online, the thumbnail was a censored shot of Britney Spears Coochie. So Food Battle was a, um, a competition between myself and Anthony, between our favorite foods to see whose favorite food can do more everyday tasks than the other. Anthony's was a taquito. And mine was a pink frosted sprinkled donut because we thought the pink frosted sprinkled donut was silly looking. And, and there was definitely like a, a, um, a phallic nature to the taquito and a, um, a whole nature to the donut. You know, I think there was just some, there was some, you know, naughtiness going on with, with the foods that we chose. We were like, oh, like what if we made it seem more like a, like a, like a sporting event. So we're like, let's call it Food Battle 2006. And then when like 2007 came around, people were like, when's Food Battle 2007? We're like, what? And then it just became this yearly event. And we kept trying to like do it up like more and more than we had like, we started incorporating like uh, audience uh, voting on like whose food uh, Anthony would, would use for the, for the next year. It's been very interesting. It's also been interesting to see some fans grow up with us or, or you know, like we had two fans in the community. You know, one of these guys was our was was like one of our big fans, like back in the MySpace days. And then he met uh, a girl that was also a fan, like through the community. They met at VidCon, uh, started dating, had a kid. And I'm pretty sure they're still, they're still together. I mean, the kid must be like seven years old now or something. Like, it's just, it's just wild to see like the way that, you know, creators bring communities together and, and what those communities um, do. Yeah, I think, I think for, for me, like, you know, we had always talked about this idea of turning Smosh into an ensemble, a place that other funny people could aspire to be a part of the channel and grow within our channel and giving other funny people the opportunity to grow an audience through Smosh. You know, when, when Anthony had told me that, you know, he was, he was thinking about leaving, you know, I wanted to support him how, however we could. But I, I was still interested in, in staying with Smosh and growing Smosh and continuing the mission that, you know, we had started together. I, I kept it a secret. I kept it a secret with with the with everyone. And then, you know, we announced it. And then it was like, okay, everyone, like now's the now's the time that we all need to like come together and kind of change what this is. And because I think there was there was a time when our audience was split between people that were that were down with the idea of Smosh being an ensemble and people who were only Ian and Anthony fans. It was a it was a wild time. Luckily the audience was was very supportive and very supportive of, of Anthony's choice to go on his own. It was scary. Yeah, I mean I think it I think it worked out for for everyone.
with Saturday Night Live, like you've heard, like we've all heard like horror stories about like, oh yeah, this person's a monster. Like these people hate each other, um, but it's okay because like with Saturday Night Live, they just have to show up and then do those sketches and then they go home. Here it's like, there, there's so much more, more chemistry that's involved and you can't fake that chemistry. Like the audience is way too smart. I think that, you know, one, one thing that I like to impress upon creators that are, you know, just starting or, or have had a lot of success but are struggling is focus on the things that, that you enjoy doing. Find other people that want to do the things that you don't want to do. So for myself, I uh, hate editing. I, if, if, if I never have to do it again, I am okay with that. Treat this thing like a job, like, you know, kind of like a nine to five, you know, take, take your weekends off. Uh, well, we, we announced a partnership with uh, G4 and uh, I'm very excited to work with the talent that's over there because they have like a big group. It's almost like a, it, it feel, it's, we're, I feel like we're in the same kind of, you know, league as them in terms of like, the funny people they have over there and the funny people we have here. And I just want to see um, what we can do together. Yeah, they can find us on YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Smosh on basically everything. Yeah, making making unscripted uh, comedy on our Smosh Pit channel, gaming content on Smosh Games, making some good old funny videos on the main Smosh channel.